Tum, 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 tum. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back to G-Bears Off Gridways, a homestead in the desert. And yeah, I had a little request uh, through comments that uh, I figured I would address that today because it's so windy outside, 25 mile per hour winds. It's too noisy to do anything else. So let's get right to it. And uh, before I forget, I want to start this whole thing off uh, on a follow up over the solar for beginners. Remember we talked about the um, charge controllers and uh, this one's a 1224, 12 or 24 volt. And this is only for um, lead acid type batteries, whether they be sealed or they have the caps where you have, got, have to add water to them all the time. And if you're going to add water, remember distilled water only. Do not put tap water in there. It'll kill your battery. So, um, yeah, they, it, it's only for lead acid type batteries. Now, if you want to use LifePo 4, and I want to explain the difference between LifePo 4 and Lion. Okay, the Lion, L I O Ns, are lithium ion. All right, then uh, that's different than the LifePo 4, which is lithium iron phosphate oxygen um, batteries okay so they're, they're a completely different thing now this battery probably weighs uh, in the neighborhood of 40 to 50 pounds it's really heavy so if you're going to make a portable unit for camping um, this even though this battery is pretty strong and everything it's really not ideal for something like that you want to go with something that's like a um, LifePo 4 and LifePo 4s are designed to um, be a lightweight battery and give you plenty of power. All right so with that being said um, you cannot use one of these charge controllers on a LifePo 4 battery okay and don't go with Lion batteries those are the ones they put in the um, electric bikes and little electric scooters and things like that. Um, those things are uh, not the safest in the world and they can run away while charging so you never want to charge those unattended and, and don't charge them inside of a building where that could burn down because those batteries could run away, explode and catch fire. LifePo 4s ha usually have a built-in um, controller on them that makes sure that that doesn't happen. Now, I'm not going to say it won't ever happen, but it uh, it makes it a little bit safer. So, if you're going to do it, you have to get a charge controller that is good for LifePo 4 batteries. I'm going to leave a link um, in the description for a charger that's a fairly decent price on um, a charge controller. Fairly decent price on Amazon um, in the description below. So if anybody wants to set themselves up with that little portable solar unit, they can take uh, go on that online and, and download it so they can get themselves a LifePo 4 type controller. Now, a lot of companies, different companies make them, but I searched through Amazon and I found one that's a, a decent unit and a affordable price. So, look in the description for that. Now, to the question that I got. How do you tuck electrical wires into an electrical box when you're putting the final outlets in? How do you get the wires in there without them um, shorting across the, the each other or crisscrossing or anything like that? All right. So we're going to cover that very quickly. First of all, and most obvious, the number one problem that people have is they buy shallow boxes that are too shallow to handle 
the outlets and the wiring. Okay, now a shallow box is like this one. Okay, you can see two fingers. Okay, it's only two fingers tall. Look at this one. It's three fingers tall. Well, let me get it up there on screen. Three fingers tall. Okay, this one would be easier to get the wires inside than this one. Now this type, normally used in commercial or for lighting and the ceiling and that stuff, has what they call a ring that fits on top of this and it'll have a smaller opening for an electrical outlet. And that's fine. And you, you, if you have one with a single um, rectangular opening in it, you could put a GFI in there. And you see the GFI is deep enough so that it fits in there. But if you look down in there, it's pretty dang close to the bottom of the box. So the, the ring would lift it up a little bit, but still, it's going to be tight trying to get it in there. So you want to go with a deeper box. Now this is a deeper box. Look how much deeper this is compared to this. So if I can put this in here, look at how much space is left behind it. So there's plenty of room to get the wires folded in behind it. But on this one, you'd have a heck of a time. Same thing, this is a deep box. And this is for exterior mount. It's a plastic box, normally used with plastic conduit. But look, I can put the GFI on there and look at it. I've got still got a, a full inch of space behind the GFI for the wiring. But, but if I put it in a box this shallow, I've only, I've only got less than a quarter of an inch of space behind it. You're going to have a heck of a time trying to get the wires compressed into there. Now this is also a cut-in box or uh, an old work box where you cut a hole in a rectangular hole in the wall and you can insert this in there and it's got these little wing tabs that you can put your screw gun in there and you start turning it and this thing lifts up and then tightens to the back of the drywall or the plywood or whatever you have on the wall. Okay, so you got one at the top and one at the bottom for doing that. So it gives it a nice secure anchor in inside the wall and it'll be flush with the wall on the outside. So those are nice even for an exterior and then you can put a weather tight cover on there with your outlet in there so it won't get water on it. Why not, right? If you use this type here, you still have to use a weather tight cover, but this one's going to be on the outside of the wall so it protrudes outside and it uh, takes up a little space. It's something you can catch your thigh on when you're walking past. If it's flush with the wall, you you don't have that problem. All right, so how do we get the wires inside of the box without twisting them and tangling them or having trouble pushing them into place and all of that stuff? Okay, first of all, you can see I've inserted, inserted the wire and I've stripped the casing off of the Romex so that I can insert the wire inside of the box. Notice down at the bottom, I have just enough of the insulation sticking through so that when this little plastic tab catches on it, you can't pull it back out because that thing keeps it from pulling out, okay? So the wire is stuck in the box. You want to have at least three and a half inches of wire sticking out of the box. And uh, you can use your hand because three fingers go four fingers and you're sure you're okay. Okay. So four fingers sticking out. Let's see. I, you know, I got a tape measure right here. I just eyeballed that because I've been doing them so long. But let's see. Three. Three and a half inches outside. Look at that. Yeah, that's a that, that comes from experience. Okay, so if you had these wires hooked to an electrical outlet on the sides here, it's going to take a little bit. It's going to take a half an inch of that, but you still have three inches of wire there. So how do you get those wires inside the box? Well, since I'm coming in from the bottom of the box in this instance. What I want to do is I push the wires down 
to the top of the box and fold them at that point after they're connected to the um, outlet. And of course you're doing this with the power off. Okay, so now I've got them folded to that point, right? Now I can bring this this way and I've taken up some of the space behind the wire. Now these wires will be connected to the outlet. Remember, gold screw, black wire, silver screw, white wire. So the black wire is on the right, the uh, white wire is on the left, and the ground wire is on the ground screw. So once I've got it to this point, and, and I've, I've bent it down to here, now I can put my fingers right about halfway on the wires, and I can bend them again back the other direction while pushing on the outlet. All right? Now, when I push the outlet down into place, I'm going to push it down to where I can start the two screws into the holes they go in. All right? This, those two screws go into those holes. And then I can just press on the front, upper, and lower of the outlet to push the rest of the wiring down inside, like that. Okay? So they make a kind of a Z shape in the box, and that keeps them separate from being able to make contact with each other. Now notice that the ground screw is on the white wire side. That's because ground and neutral could actually make contact with each other without short circuiting. But if it was on this side and it made contact with one of those two screws, you'd have a problem. Another thing that uh, beginners always make a mistake of doing, they only use two screws. They use one screw here and one screw here because they only had one set of wires coming through. They leave the other screw and on each side sticking out like that. Okay? That's a no-no. I hate when I open up um, an outlet in, in somebody's house and I find that. Those are just calling out. To be shorted somehow. Take the time, screw them in all the way inside so they're not sticking out of the side of it like that. Okay? Make sure they're screwed all the way in. You won't have to worry about those shorting against anything, especially if you're in a, a tight box like this. Look at how much clearance you got with that screw sticking out. That's not much, right? Even if I centered it. You got an eighth of an inch on each side. That's scary. Because if that hot wire touches that metal box, that metal box, if it's not grounded, becomes charged with electricity and you can get a jolt when you grab a hold of it. So please, if you only use two screws, tighten the other two in also before you put the whole thing back together. All right, so that's basically how easy it is to do this. Now, sometimes you have extra wires. Like if you had two wires coming in, going to the bottom two screw, uh, screws on this thing, black and white, but you are going to come out of this with a black and a white, go out the top of the box, and go over to another receptacle in another box. Well... Then you're going to have more wires inside of here. Do it the same way. These coming in from the bottom, bring them up to the top first, fold them backward, and then put press it in so they go the other direction. If you're coming in from the top, you're going to go to the bottom first, fold them back, and then connect them to the um, outlet from the top side. And then when you push the whole thing in, all the wires are just like this. They go right into the box without giving you a hard time. Now I've over the years taken a little dowel like this and I made this little notch in it with a, a file so that I could actually, if I need to, I could actually reach in and push those wires with that little notch without scraping the insulation. So it's a great little tool to have if you're doing a lot of electrical and you have 
extra wires in your box that are a pain in the ass. All right, everybody. That's about it. So, remember what I taught you here? Any questions and comments, leave them below. I try to get back to everybody in a timely manner. Um, hey, what can I say? I like helping people. And uh, for all of my helping people all over the world, somehow I'm getting bad karma here and I'm, I'm eating crap right now because I can't afford anything because I got crooked lawyers in charge of an estate who aren't um, do, doing their job as they're supposed to by law. And I've been waiting, going on three years pretty soon, for my payment, which my good friend left me some money, and he had it all set up in a trust to start with, and I would have had that in no time at all, a couple of months in, after his death. But these two crooks swindled him and talked him into getting rid of the trust, using a will, and putting themselves into the will. That's bullshit. And it really pisses me off when people do that. This world is so full of crooked crooks nowadays, it's a shame that we have to live in it. This is G-Bear, thanking you for joining me and signing off.